violence, as problematic as a war with Syria would be, it will pale in comparison with the problems that we will face with Iran. Okay. And just like Syria, we started out having this conversation. The administration wanted to have a conversation just about this narrow issue of what do we do about Syria's CW use, but looming behind it was this much larger issue of what do we do about the Syrian civil war itself, and do we want to get involved in that wider war, and do we want to take steps that could open us up to getting involved in that wider war, so too is that the case with Iran. If Rouhani proves to be everything that we hope he is, everything that I believe him to be, and he is also able to bring along Iran's hardliners, which is obviously going to be the, the greatest trick for him to do so. If he's able to do that, he's going to put a deal on the table, which I will tell you is probably going to be very good, but a lot of other people are going to be very fearful of, and fearful for good reason. It isn't going to be perfect. The Iranians are not going to give up all enrichment activity. Okay, they've made this clear over and over and over again. There is going to be some residual capability left over. Okay, and that means that there is going to be a lot of room for debate. Okay, but the problem is that I am very concerned that what we're going to do is we're going to have a debate about that specific deal. And what we're going to miss is the more important debate that lies behind it. The more important debate that lies behind it is what do we do if we don't take the deal? Or what do we do if Rouhani can't put the deal on the table? Because if that is the case, we're going to be facing two much worse choices. A choice between containing Iran, maybe even containing a nuclear Iran, or going to war to prevent Iran from acquiring that capability. And until you can answer that question, until we as a nation can come to an answer on that question, we can't really know whether or not we're going to want to take what is ultimately going to be a good but imperfect offer by Rouhani, again, assuming he's able to put it on the table. All of this is the topic of my new book. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I tried to write a book that I thought would be useful to pretty much any average American who's trying to come at this issue and trying to decide for himself or herself what we ought to be doing with Iran. So the book has three broad parts. The first part of it, um, I like to think, is the intel briefing. And as Anya described, I've had many different parts to my career. And so I tried to kind of weave those different pieces together. So the first part is just a kind of pure intel briefing. I talk about the Iranian regime, its politics, how it makes decisions, what we know, and mostly what we don't know, about how they think about their nuclear program, their goals, everything else that would matter to you. I talk about the nuclear program as best we understand it, most based mostly on the in inspections regime that the IAEA performs in Iran. And I talk about the threat that a nuclear Iran might create for American interests and for the Middle East. In the second part, I shift gears and I talk a little bit about the different policy options for preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. And I spend a lot of time on this diplomatic option.